So summer's here and the time is right to review a helmet camera, in this case the Mio MyView M560. I've picked this one up for about £100 in the UK. People have asked me to review more helmet cameras recently because of course we're getting around to summer now. People are getting out of their bicycles or motorcycles and I haven't reviewed one for a while so I thought this one was worth checking out. It's been out on the market for a while but this is the first time I've been able to get around to picking it up. So let's have a good look at what you get inside the box other than the manual of course. Well we've got the camera we'll look at that in more detail in a bit we've got a usb lead with a waterproof end cap on there which means you can power this thing so you can charge it and record at the same time whilst keeping it all waterproof and i'm happy to see they've decided to use the gopro style mount here which i suppose has now become an industry standard so rather than having some unusual mount that you can't get spares of much better to use something like this although you will have to attach it to this a unique part here which attaches around the Mio camera so you have difficulty getting extra ones of those but at least half of it's a standard GoPro mount anyway. Now that goes round the camera before you put it onto the mount and it's got a rubberized inside to that loop so it will hold the camera firm and in position uh, but you can twist it around as well if you want to so you can have it on say the side of a motorcycle helmet or a bicycle helmet or on the top or on the other side it's uh, quite convenient that you can just rotate it easily like that but it won't rotate when you're just riding along on its own because the rubber holds it in position now of course once you've got the camera inside the loop and tightened up and got it at the angle you want you don't have to keep removing it from there it's just a matter of unclipping the gopro style mount from the adhesive mount which remains attached to the helmet now i might as well show you how i'm going to put this on my bike helmet now so you get an idea of the position so I'm going to put it on the side here above this contour mount and it'll go at an angle like that as you can see the contour mounts at that angle and that's because once you've got a helmet on it tilts at a certain angle so I'll put it on following that and we'll see how well I get it positioned for later but it's important you get it angled right at the beginning because of course if you don't you can't twist it up and down in its mount the angle is set the moment you stick that adhesive on the helmet so I suppose you could get additional adhesive mounts but you don't really want to waste them. It's good that these are official VHB stickers you can tell you get that some of these Chinese ones um, they're very weak and they're likely to fall off but because this is from a good quality make they're supplying official 3M VHB tape and you can see how it wraps to the helmet there it's got a good spongy layer and it stays attached now I could put this camera on the top if I wanted to but I don't like cameras on the top of helmets they do look a little bit weird so I prefer to put it on the side so whilst the adhesive sets on that mount, I'll leave it overnight, we'll have a look around this camera. You can see they're quite proud of the fact it's got a Sony sensor inside it. It's only got the one button on, which is rubberized on the top there. Of course, it's all water resistant, this. It's a metal body. We've got one little hole at the back, which is probably something to do with the microphone. And of course, the lens on the other end. But there's not an awful lot to see. It's a very simple, neat little device. If we just unscrew the cap off the back of this, and just have a look what's inside there. Well, a little bit of information about the charging voltages. There's a rubber grommet on here. I suppose you call it a grommet, do you? A washer. Anyway, that thing. And you've got to watch that doesn't fall off because it does sometimes when you open it up. So you could lose that quite easily. So we've got a micro SD card in there and a micro USB and a little LED light in there to indicate the charging status as well. The supplied USB lead can be used for charging the internal battery of the camera up or taking the files off that micro SD card or alternatively you can keep it attached while you're out and about and use it to permanently power the camera whilst keeping the camera waterproof and you could perhaps attach that to some sort of USB battery pack or a USB power supply plugged into a 12 volt lighter socket. My motorcycle does have a 12 volt accessory socket into which I can put a USB power adapter so I could use this as a dash cam effectively for my motorcycle just to demonstrate how that works I've got this set up here with the mains power supply and a USB adapter and if we switch on the power you'll see that the camera itself will switch on and then when the red light's flashing that means the camera is recording so you can see it starts up it starts recording automatically just like a normal dash cam and of course once the power is disconnected in my case pull over the motorcycle switch off the engine the power gets disconnected from the accessory socket and the camera stops recording 
Now I'd better show you the normal operation of the camera, it's just the same thing really, although it doesn't switch itself on automatically. You have to hold down the power button. Notice when I tap it, it doesn't come on, that's to stop it accidentally being switched on, perhaps in a pocket. To turn it on you have to hold down the button for a couple of seconds and then the device powers up and just like before it automatically starts recording. Now once it's recording, the only options you've got are to turn it off or to put it into standby. To put it into standby, just tap the button and the light stays on permanently, which means it's sitting now in standby. Then of course, if you want to switch it off entirely, just hold down that button until the light goes out. I'll show you how you change the settings on this camera now. It does have a few settings that you might want to dabble with. So you plug it into the computer. I'm using a normal USB lead here. And we can see the camera turns up as an additional drive. So if we have a look on that drive and see what's on there, you'll see that there isn't an awful lot at the moment. I've just got a folder with a couple of video files in it. Now, to change the settings, you have to change a file called settings.txt, which doesn't appear until you enable hidden files. Now, in Windows, it's in the menus. In the Mac, it's a key press option. But you can see there, I've got the hidden files showing now. So I've got settings and time at the bottom. So if we just go in the time one to set the time, all you have to do is just type over the time and date there and um, change update to yes and then save it. And then the next time you switch the camera on, it will apply those new time and date settings. Same thing goes for the other settings. We'll just go into that text file here. So we just have to click on the one above. And I'll just expand this out a little bit so that we can read it. And you can see at the top there, I've got the usual update, yes and no. So below there, we've got the options, light frequency, 50 or 60 hertz. That's to change the frequency so that lights don't appear to flicker. I need to change it for 50 hertz for the UK because that's what the power supply is here. So I'll change that to a one. And then below there, we've got options to turn the timestamp on or off, whether we want it to cycle round and record over the memory card when it's full, whether you want the sound on or off for the microphone volume and how long you want the segments, whether it's one or three minutes and the bit rate, which is maximum at 13 at the moment. Then it also tells me the battery level at the bottom. So those are all the settings for the camera so once you've changed those save that file and then the next time you use the camera it will update with those settings i think it's important to mention though that this camera is very finicky about the kinds of micro sd cards you use it won't support all manufacturers and it only supports cards up to 32 gigabytes i tried using a 32 gigabyte card from a different manufacturer and it wouldn't show up as an external drive when i plugged it into my computer by the way this chart is a bit useless what's x and v does x mean it supports it and v means it doesn't no key under there but anyway very strange so i'd suggest just using these this is the ones that i've used they work fine samsung 32 gig evos actually if we just wind it back a second going back to that manual it's only a couple of pages in length but it really is quite hopeless if we just look at the top under the word recording it says to start recording press and hold the power button to turn the device on now press the power button again to start recording i'm fine with that i think that's how it will operate if i turn off loop recording so that's no problem if we skip the second paragraph look at the third one to turn off the device yeah okay press and hold the power button for eight seconds fine with that the device will start continuous recording automatically after being turned on. What, what are you talking about? I mean, that's contradicting the first paragraph. And also, why are we talking about turning it on? We've just turned the flipping thing off. I can understand why a few people would send this thing back to Amazon if they were trying to follow these instructions. The supplied USB lead obscures this, but if you use your own lead, you can see on the back of the camera there's an LED indicator light which has three different colours. A permanent blue light would indicate that the camera is fully charged. The specifications on the back of the box listed the battery life as being two and a half hours, which is pretty impressive. So I thought I'd test this out. So with a fully charged camera, I set it off recording when I went to bed at 11.18 in the evening. And when I got up in the morning, I had a look at the memory card to see when it stopped recording. And it stopped at 3.16, so that's nearly four hours later. And I could only put down the extra battery life to the fact that the camera was recording in a room with the light switched off. So there wasn't much data to shift around. I don't know if that's really a reason but yeah it seems like it's got a good long battery life anyway okay enough with the boring chit chat finally time to get out on the bike and see what this camera can do well the first thing i want to point out is i'm going to show you two clips joined together here you noticed earlier on it does one minute clips or three minute clips i'll show you what happens when you join two one minute clips together and it happens at 19 seconds 12 24 and 19 or about 18 and a half i think that's where i've got two stitched together in this editing package and as you can see there was no jump there there was a bit of a, a pop perhaps or a missing bit of the sound but there was no 
overlap of frames or missing frames in the video you can stitch them together quite neatly and you won't miss any footage so everything's looking fine so far until I get out on this lovely country lane having a really nice ride here really enjoying this but we're starting to get a bit of break up on the video here if you look towards the bottom of the image in particular on the road there it starts to turn into a kind of mosaic tiles a blocking image and that's because we've got a lot of shade on the road here from these trees so there's a lot of detail in the image that's moving quickly and the encoder the video encoder just can't seem to keep up with it in the camera so whenever it loses track it just creates a little bit of a, a block and that's happening much too frequent on this camera for something that's recording at uh, 13 megabits a second normally that would be quite suitable for something like this but you can see even on this road here where there's not many shadows or anything we're getting blocking on the road now it will look worse on YouTube because it'll have been re-encoded so that blocking will be amplified if anything but I've got to be honest it doesn't look too great on the original files either and I'll have a sample clip that's available for you to download in the video description now I always upload my videos in 4k nowadays and that's because YouTube allocates more bandwidth to a 4k video so you'll find that even 1080p footage that's shown in a 4k video doesn't have as much blocking as it would if I'd uploaded in 1080p now I did something a little bit different for the nighttime footage I attached the camera to the outside of the car with suction cups because I don't ride my motorcycle in the dark I just ride it on nice sunny days for a bit of fun I'm not a commuter but I wanted to demonstrate what the footage would look like if you were someone that rode your bike all through the year and you ended up driving it around in conditions like this now it looks very dark on screen and of course it's getting on for 10 o'clock at night but it shouldn't look as dark as this However, fortunately, in the car at the same time, I've got a dash camera, the VOFO A119. So I can show you some footage from that camera just to give you an idea as to what good nighttime footage looks like. Now, the thing with the VOFO camera here, what you can see on screen with that is pretty much the same as I could see with my eyes. When I look back at the footage from the Mio camera, I could see that it was darker than I'd seen at the time. For example, all these buildings and parked cars, those were very easy to make out while I was driving along. But when I look back at the footage, they tend to turn into very dark, shadowy areas of the image. So unfortunately, this Mio camera does do quite dark footage in low light. I mean, look at this, for example, it really looks like a very dark corner on a lane the lights on the car are only lighting up the center part you can't really make out anything at all and then if I skip over we have a look at the other camera you can see it's completely different and that is what I was seeing not what came through on the Mio so I've got to say unfortunately the Mio isn't suitable for recording in lower light environments okay one final test to do and this one's quite important it's the sound quality you might not think it's that relevant but if somebody's got a helmet camera on and they get into some sort of altercation in the street perhaps they're on their bicycle and somebody's knocked them off it might be a good idea to be able to get a sound recording of who said what to who however the sound that you're listening to at the moment is being recorded on the camera but it's with the rear cap removed and this does make quite a difference let me put the cap on the camera and you'll see what I mean Okay, so I've put the pros and cons on screen here now. You can read through those, but I think we've covered it pretty much in the video. Uh, the main ones really are the blocky daytime video, the poor low light quality and the bad sound. But one thing I didn't mention, I've just added on at the bottom there, there's no audible or vibration feedback. And by that, I mean, you can't tell whether the device is recording or not unless you actually have a look at it and see whether that light's flashing on the top. And something like a positive switch movement or a beep or a vibration is something that's quite important when a camera's mounted to a helmet. You don't want to take your helmet off just to have a look whether your camera's working or not. Now, although this one didn't really work out for me, there might be people out there that are still interested in buying this. And if you are, then I've got some affiliated links in the video description alongside a link to that downloadable sample clip I mentioned earlier on. Now, there aren't many cameras out there that are in this style, this kind of side mounted barrel shape. However, I have got my eye on another one from Senna and I might well review that in a future video. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.